Well, we've just arrived on the Embryo Norton Disney Complex, and both Brad and I have decided to fish Billy's Lake. There's two lakes here, and this is the one with a bigger head of fishing. And with the weather as it is, absolutely Baltic. Freezing cold today. <laughs> I think this will stand us in the best chance of catching. So, mate, what's the plan? Uh, well, we need to go and have a wander first things first. Yeah. Because um, I don't think it's going to be easy. And no. If we catch one, then it'll be fantastic. But yeah. yeah, we need to go and find some carp, mate. I agree. There's not many people on the lake. I think there's one other angler at the moment. So he must be as mad as we are on this cold day. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're going to go and have a little wander, hopefully find some fish. And you never know, mate. Big scaly one might uh, make Fingers an appearance. Crossed, eh? Fingers crossed. Let's go and have a look. Well, Brad and I were just wandering down here and I just spotted a fish out the corner of my eye. Looked about 80 yards out, something like that, in these middle areas that command sort of a large chunk of the open water of the lake. So we're still going to have a wander. Is that another one? Yeah, like in between all them coots out there. What, further like out? Silly distance. Silly yeah. distance, yeah. <laughs> well, we've spotted a couple now. That one was a lot, lot further out. I've marked, was he the... Uh, the oh yeah, I just Beyond saw that one as well, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a long way, isn't it? <laughs> we might be able, there might be closer swims over there, mate. Mm. I think we're going to have a little wander still. I've, uh, I've bucketed the swim with a pink embryo mug. So, um, yeah, we've got the swim for the moment. We're going to have a little wander and see if we can get any closer to where Brad's... Oh, Anne again, yeah. Okay, so we've... Yeah, there's another area out oh, there. Don't they? Yeah, right amongst the birds by the looks of it. Right, let's mark this swim, mate, and go and have a little wander and see if there's any closer to that area, I think. Yeah. Let's go and have a look. Oh, that's cool, Brad. So we're about halfway round the lake, and both Brad and I have seen three or four fish now. Yeah. And they look to be just off the end of this point in sort of the central area of the lake which Ben said was a good area and they had been holding up in lately. So seems as good as areas to start in as anywhere else really, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, well, we've seen a few, so it's about all yeah. we've got to go on. And they all seem to be in the same sort of area, don't they? So. Yeah, exactly. So I think this would be a good starting point. I'm going to go and get the gear and get started. Right, so both Brad and I fancy the left-hand side of the swim. So to make it fair, I'm just gonna go in there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually a joke. We are gonna do rock, paper, scissors. So, mate, are we just gonna go like one, two, three, bang? Okay, mate. Yeah? Go, rock, paper, scissors. Do it on scissors. Okay, yeah? so dum, dum, bang. Yeah. Okay, right. Are we doing ready best then? of three or? Yeah, best of three, yeah. All right, right ready? ready? Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, he's bashed it up. There's one nil to Bradders. Okay. Really? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors. No! <laughs> so you on the right hand side? Um, I'll go in there. <laughs> Done over there. Done over. Right, cool. Now, both Brad and I have got the arduous task of finding a few spots. It's quite weedy out there, so I'm just using a light lead on braided mainline, and then I'm just gonna 
feel the lead down and just keep bumping it over the weed until I find a spot basically. I think Brad is doing something very similar. Because I don't fancy putting the baits on top of the weed to be honest, I'd much rather find a clearer spot. So I'm just bumping a little light lead as you can see, just lifting it up, bumping it off the weed and hopefully at some point I'm going to bump it onto a clear spot. A marker float in these circumstances gets all snarled up and you only get sort of a cast before you reel it in and it's absolutely covered in weed. So just using a lead, bumping it along. As soon as I hit a nice spot, I'll clip it up and search the area. So far, I haven't found anything. It's such a zigzag weather, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It don't surprise me that. So I've just pinged out a zig just while I was finding some spots ready for this evening, and out of the blue, it's just absolutely busted off. It uh, buoyed me up, and I've, I think I've just managed to clear it, but I can't actually feel if the fish is still on or not. But fingers crossed it is, and if so, hopefully we can get it in the net and show you. But it's, it's looking good, bite that quickly, so hopefully start with good things to come. Go on, sir. I don't know, you tell me. You got it? Yeah, boy! Bosh! Well nice carp. First one? Yeah, and well nice. So that fish is safely sitting down there in the net and I'm going to waste no time and get the rod straight back out onto the spot. Fingers crossed we can get another quick bite. Here's a very quick success bite on a zig. Just chucked out to where we saw him showing this morning, a fair bit of range. So yeah, started the session absolutely brilliantly. So I'm gonna get some bait out now, get some spots sorted for the night, and fingers crossed we can catch a few more. Well, I've slipped that fish back now and putting out a bit of bait for tonight. I'm not going to go mad because it's been proper cold over the past couple of days, so I'm probably going to put out 15 spots or so, only the medium ones, so it's not actually that much bait. Bait consists of literally a few ingredients, six mil pellet, a bit of chopped boily, and some flake maize as well. So I'm going to carry on spotting and then think about getting the rods out for this evening because the day is ticking on. Well, you might have noticed that I've moved swims quite quickly. Uh, yeah, I'm sheeping Brad up a little bit. No, I'm only kidding. I must have spent half an hour trying to find a spot in that right-hand side, and it's absolutely choked with weed. I could try fishing on top of the weed, but I feel like I'm uh, weeing in the wind a little bit doing that. So, um, yeah, I haven't bothered. Actually, Ben came into the swim afterwards and said to me that it's one of the most weediest areas on the lake, and I'd do very, very well to find a clear spot. So, come to the left of Brad, immediately found some lovely areas at about 80 90 yards something like that so i'm going to fish two rods tight on that spot one on a zig i'm going to leave that there all night and we'll see what happens i'm going to get a bit of a spot over the top of it as well i'm actually going to use a mixture of flaked maize and live system it's very very clear on here so i'm thinking sort of that yellowy color on the bottom may attract the carp 
at least that's the plan anyway. I'm gonna get the rods out now. Hopefully we'll catch something. Well, I've finished putting the bait out now and getting the rigs ready for tonight. As you can see, I've got a couple of hinges here, opted for a white northern and an ester fruit cream as well. They're just on little short links, but with stiff booms, just to ensure they don't tangle in the flight. The reason why I'm using hinges over like solid bags or anything like that is because I'm not 100% sure about the bottom out there. It goes down for a nice crack, get a nice little drawback, but it is patchy with the odd bit of weed, so this will just ensure it's tangle free and it presents over whatever may be out there. So for now, I'm going to get the rods out for the night and fingers crossed we can catch one. Well, this is my simple mix for the session ahead. Basically, the calf in here get fed flaked maize quite a lot. There's actually a particle ban on here. You're only allowed pellets, boilies, and flaked maize at this time of year. I think it does change as it gets into the winter, but for the moment, I'm gonna stick with the maize. I've soaked up a load of flaked maize, and it's gone lovely damp, and you can ball it up and if you throw this into the lake, it gets all caught up in the weed. There's loads of little bits of flaked maize all cut up in the weed, and it's really, really appealing. Now, sticking to that sort of bright yellowy sort of theme, I've also liked to add some of these live system pellets. It's really cold now, so I want nice soluble pellets that break down quickly and leak attraction. So I'm adding some live system pellets in there as well. Not loads, sort of a few handfuls worth. And then I'm adding live system 10 millers as well. Again, this is very, very soluble, very digestible in cold water. So a few handfuls worth in there as well. Give it a little bit of a mix. And that is looking really, really nice. Finally, I'm gonna add once again, a very soluble liquid particularly in cold water. It's got a nice sort of fruity smell to it as well and tastes lovely and sweet. And that's the Amino Blend 365. You don't need to do loads of Amino Blend. Just enough to coat all the baits there, lovely. Give it a mix up. And this will really, really stand out on the bottom in this clear water. And because the carp are very, very young, I think they'll be really attracted to that yellowy colour. Just look at that. Smells absolutely wonderful. No doubt tastes lovely and sweet as well. And the carp love it. Well, me old China. <laughs> what do you reckon? Oh, gonna freeze it. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, and we're right on the end of that northeasterly, aren't we? You feeling it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. They're, they're, they're obviously here earlier and had a few single beats throughout the day, but yeah, a lot trickier than. Well, you had that one quickly, didn't you? And thought, here we go. This is the way. Kick off, but yeah, it wasn't the case, was it? No, it wasn't, mate. No, I think you must have landed it on its head. <laughs> I don't know, mate. It's um, I'd like to see a couple, wouldn't you? Yeah, I thought we would see a few this evening, but. You know yeah. what this time of year is like, you normally hear them through the hours of darkness, don't you? So. Yeah, yeah. The saving grace is we've put out a bit of bait. They're quite sort of, um, they're new fish, aren't they? So I feel like if they do come across the bait. Yeah, they're, they're going to be in pods as well, aren't they? It's not going to be just no, like that's fish. Right. There's going to be. That's what I mean. I feel like they're going to get quite excited if they find a bit of bait, so. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, well, they're out, mate. There's nothing more we can do. There's nothing to move on, is there? We haven't seen them anywhere else, so. We are where they were earlier on. Just got to uh, hope that one rattles off. 
Well, I'm sure we'll go into the night full of anticipation. That's it, mate. I'm going to zip that door down, though. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> Well, good morning from an absolutely Baltic Norton Disney. That was cold, wasn't it? Freezing, mate, absolutely freezing. <laughs> I feel like winter is here, it's only November and there's frost on the floor. There's freezing cold winds blowing into our bivvies all night and it was Baltic. So I've got to say for me, it was rather quiet. But, Bradders. Pulled out of the bag. You have, mate. What we got? Uh, just a small one, another one of the little pretty scaly ones, but yeah, just before first light this morning, left under went into a bit of a meltdown and the white northern done his thing. So. Good old boy. Well, that's a right result in that weather, isn't it, mate? Yeah, definitely. We, we didn't go to bed particularly confident, did we? <laughs> no, not at all. We did hear a few in the night, though, We did. To be fair, yeah, they were yeah, we did. that deeper water, weren't they? So. They were, mate, they were. So yeah, a right result in this weather. Like I said, it is so, so cold. We're going to give it till around mid-morning today. We've got a couple of zigs out, the rest on the bottom, and you never know, we might catch another one. But if not, I'd say that's a result. Well, let's get her out and have a look. Time to get cold hands. <laughs> So here's our prize from just before first light this morning. We knew it was going to be a tricky session and we've adapted throughout as well, having one on a zig and this one on the deck. So yeah, we're going to get this one slipped back. Might be chance of another one yet, but we'll see. And yeah, I'll get it put back now. Winter can often be a very, very tricky time of year if you get your location wrong. However, get it right and you could catch some really, really nice fish in the cold. Areas that I like to look for generally are the warmer areas of the lake. Now that could be snags, could be Norfolk reed beds, old dying weed beds, lily beds, changes of depth. And failing that, particularly on larger waters, I like to target the middle. For some reason, the carp just hone in on that middle area of the lake, you can have some great results. Well, we're all packed up after a very cold 24 hour session. I'm quite glad it's over, to be honest. It weren't nice sitting in that <laughs> wind, but it paid off, so. It did, mate. You did very well to winkle two out, that's for sure. But I can't wait to come back here in the warmer weather because yeah, it's a serious venue, isn't it? Yeah, like we were saying earlier as well, there'll be a mental chance for floater fishing. Yeah, like there will. Wicked. I reckon we should book a trip in for the spring, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Sounds good, mate. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Just goes to show that no matter how cold it is, you've always got a chance of a bite.